All right, Neil Ratner, Rock Talk here. It's your Sunday afternoon with two old guys talking about <laughs> rock and roll. Don't and start, here's the man. Big M back again. Don't start, don't start. <laughs> so I just posted something about Stevie Wonder and Talking Book because it's the anniversary of uh, the date when he released that. And you told me a very funny story about when you met Stevie Wonder. So why don't we share oh, yeah. that with oh. everybody? Oh yeah, the first time I met him was in the studio back in, I think, 70, 74, something like that. I was in the studio with Junior Marvin, the guitar player from the from the Whalers, played with Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. But he had a solo, solo deal with, with uh, Manticore, which is ELP's label. Right. And we were producing... Which you a, were running. Yeah, right. And also we were producing a record in, in the record plant. And that night, Steve was also in the record plant working with those two Moog guys, you know, working on his next album uh -huh. and you know and he, and he was we were walking to the place he's playing drums and playing this and you know talking with everybody right and so junior was really you know he idolized stevie wonder because the singing and everything so we uh -huh. met him then we we talked and we get, it was in the coffee area and he, and he introduced everybody said hey, this is mario me i said how you doing boom he said hello how you doing and etc now he only spoke to me that one time right <laughs> and I go back in the studio and I was in there for about three or four hours, right? right? Before I go back to the coffee room. Yeah. And I go back to the coffee room to get me some coffee. And Steve is in there walking around just like he can see, grabbing stuff. <laughs> I've been walking in and pouring the coffee. And I said, I said, man, you can't be blind. He said, he said, he said, what's up, Mario? And he didn't even see me because he picked up my voice. He said, what you talking about, Mario? I said, man, you can't be blind. You're walking around here pouring this up. <laughs> and he said, but I am, though. You know, I am. You know? And we talked, but he picked up my voice immediately. I said, well, man, it's amazing. You know, because you, he just said he had a gift for that, you know? Yeah, but that was Stevie. I yeah, man. Stevie just had the ability yeah, to. Unbelievable. One time, man, it was almost like a photographic audio memory in yeah, a way, you know? I know? But I guess when you're blind, those other senses get developed yeah, but, uh, yeah, but really I, acutely, but. I saw Stevie when he debuted at the uh, Apollo Theater in New York in 1958, I think. You mean fingertips? Back fingertips. in fingertips, he was doing fingertips in 1958 yeah, 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 yeah. or 59. I don't uh -huh. know what year it was, 58. Right. But I remember I saw him then. And, you know, over the time, you know, I always idolized him. I thought he was great, especially when he, when he uh, started doing his own stuff, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First, Motown had him doing whatever they wanted him to do, but then I guess he had a deal where he could do what he wanted. Yeah, well. When but I remember... In 72, they had the, the Sticky Fingers tour. Rolling Stones had Stevie Wonder opening. For right, them. right, right, right. And uh, I was on that tour. And I mean, we were, you know, we were in, I think, Houston or Dallas somewhere. And the sound check is happening. And Jack is going crazy because it's time for Stevie Wonder to be there. And no sound check. And he's cursing. Like, what the apple, the boom, the pop, the pop, the hip, the no, I mean, no sound check. I said, hey, man, the man is blind. He's going to go wherever they need him. It ain't him. Don't put it on him. It's, it's got to be the road manager. You know, you don't know what time of day it is. And then Stevie finally showed up. You know, and it, it was cool. But, man, Jack was pissed like a mama jamma, you know? Well, what what kind of tour was that? Sticky Fingers tour. Oh, that was fantastic. Been a crazy, crazy It was a great tour, time. man. It was uh -huh. like, you know, they had so many people that were celebrities and so on that I had never heard of before. Truman Capote and everybody and Prince Wild Rill or somebody, Jack on that. They would all come around, you know, like not like Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, like mostly hippies. Mm. But these guys, this Hollywood elite would want to come around and hang around, you know, and the bourgeois and, and you know, and and, and Led Zeppelin didn't give a darn about that. They just, mm -hmm. you know. You know, you mentioned Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to lead you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you told me a story about Led Zeppelin loving cowboy stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and that, sure. like, that story flipped me out. Why don't we share that, that story? Like, oh, okay, you were on the road with Led Zeppelin. I was a cowboy fanatic, too. But you can, so we were, the first tour I went on, well, I think it was 69, the, the second. They had, did one tour with Vanilla Fudge. Right. Now it's the next tour they on their own. Right, and, and they, on, then they were headliners by that tour? Yeah, they didn't have nobody open for them. Right, okay. But anyway, we were on this tour, and we ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was the first time I had gone there. Right. And as the Indians, you know, they ended up, because Rob was into Indians and stuff, you know, but they had the cowboy boost the whole trip. You just go to the store. <laughs> I and I, boy, we, I, we bought turquoise. I had turquoise, an uh, Indian necklace, you know, with all the uh, plus. He, he got one, but you know, and these members are rich, and I'm up trying to buy the stuff they buy. <laughs> but hey, man, I, was, I, had, I had a credit card, so I put it up with it. So, man, we, we left but that it, the American West fascinated them. Oh, Cowboys, fascinated. Indians, and, and, the and whole you know deal, man. It fascinated me because my grandmother is, is a full-blooded Cherokee, you know? Really? Yeah. I've been birthed But anyway, <laughs> man, let me tell you, the trip is, 
they had the art and the crafts. Right. And all that stuff with the turquoise. And right. I have I have one of those big bracelets that, that yeah, we yeah, got. Yeah. yeah. And I, I still have one of the belts, you know, and rings. Right. But they, they ended up being popular for a while and they were selling for a little bit I guess a little more value around nineteen ninety. Yeah. yeah. But I've had mine so long they're probably back down to ten cents now, you know. <laughs> but they but they always went to the Western stores to buy uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to buy you know, boots, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Wanted to buy saddles and all that, but you know, people hear them on the radio look for a saddle, they end up giving it to them, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you went to a western town or something, didn't you? Went to, I went to, uh, <laughs> that was in, in in Arizona. We stayed at the Flagstaff. Flag, uh, it was uh, the Biltmore Hotel in, in Oh, Arizona. yeah, 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 in Phoenix. Yeah, in Phoenix. That's a beautiful yeah, we, hotel. A beautiful, beautiful hotel. hotel. And, yeah, and you yeah, go yeah, ride yeah. horses, you know, they got uh -huh. people, you go uh -huh. ride the horse all in the mountain and shit. So I end up, uh, you know, I think I think Rob Plant was sick, but anyway, everybody wanted to go ride. You know, I think Jim, I mean, uh, Jimmy Page. I don't know who all went, but I know I fell off the horse. You know, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I know I jumped off the horse. You know, but let me tell you, we were going up side of a mountain. You know, uh -huh. Jimmy Page and Bonzo and may, I maybe Richard. And, and I don't think John Paul Jones was there, but whatever. It was enough people there and a whole bunch of cowboys, you know, that lives in Arizona. <laughs> that's supposed to be the guide, right? And I had asked the guy. That give out the horses. Hey man, give me the horses that you give to the little kids. Cause I don't want to be on no fast horse. He's bucking and jumping, run off on his kids. He said, "Oh yeah, boy, a cowboy." Cause I had cowboy boots. So hey, you look like a cowboy. Let me give you the dice. He gave me the the horse that was absolutely crazy. The horse man looked saw a snake man and ran up like in a movie man. Ran up and started taking off man down the side of the mountain. And I looked. I said, and everybody been hey, they all hollering and carrying on. And I'm looking back and you know I'm clean as a man. I got on leather. <laughs> leather outfit, you know, North Beach leather. Yeah, North Beach leather. I'm clean as a bill of health, man, but I got my cowboy boots on. But, you know, I saw he getting ready to go around there. He might fall off the side, so I decided I'd take my leg off. <laughs> and I jumped off, man, right into a cactus bush. Oh, no. And oh, all of no. my leg and everything got all messed up, man. You know, and, you know, and uh, I, they had to take me to the hospital. I couldn't make a concert that night. No kidding. And and, uh, and Jones and all of us saying, like, hey, man, we're going to, uh, you know, lucky it was Mario. You know, he's... He's pretty good shape, so he should be all right. <laughs> Look, man, for six months, man, those 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 needles were popping out popping of my out. head. Yeah, body was that was some out. pain stuff. But yeah, I mean, body was spitting them out. That, I'll never forget that. That was like a. Well, were they the craziest man you ever went on the road with? No, they weren't the craziest. They, yeah. they 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 got crazy after I left them, but you know, then they were new. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. they still they still I had more fun with them because they were party. You know, just happy go lucky guy. Wasn't stuck up on trying to be a star and stuff. It's, on the play. We're going to leave him with one last Led Zeppelin story. Yeah, which one? <laughs> we told it before, but we're going to tell it again. Yeah. It's the hotel, I think, the Edgewater Hotel. Oh, yeah, well, the Edgewater Hotel, where was that? That Seattle. was Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Seattle. That, that was, uh, that, not, I'm not talking about the bad part when he was on that road with... Uh, <laughs> Frank Zappa? No, no, they were on the road with uh, Vanilla Fudge. That was the first one. Oh, group. right. They had, they had the sharks. They were taking the sharks. And Much shark. Them, yeah, they were putting them in the yeah, The thing that Frank Zappa wrote about. Yeah, but anyway, that was okay. like before me. But okay, they, but this was, is but the next tour. Yeah, the next tour. They were... Just gone. Oh, we're back, we're back. Go they ahead. Were excited. So, they were excited because we were on the road, and the next stop was going to be... Uh, Seattle. It's Seattle. A bar. They kept telling me, Jimmy, but everybody, Bonds, whatever. Man, Mario, man, you get... You get your uh, a fishing rod, you get fish right out the window, man. <laughs> out you know, the window of the hotel. Right, right in the middle of the hotel. <laughs> it's right on the bay. And you don't have to just throw it out the window. And they sell the fishing rods right in the hotel. <laughs> the store. So we're going to go in there and we go to the grocery store and buy some steak. The dollar sixty nine steak. That'll work perfectly. <laughs> and they was the look here, man. They bought like boom boogoo steak. <laughs> threw that stuff on the hook and put them out the window. And you know, and it goes right to the bottom. They start pulling them in, man. Right, right. So they pull a shark, you know, big shark, different size. So we didn't have to wait So now this in. is in Led Zeppelin's hotel room. Yeah. They're fishing I, out the window everybody. and they're pulling sharks yeah. and, and very, shit. And various rooms, you know. Various rooms, right. So like, you pull a shark up, you get, when this room fill up, you go to the next one. Because <laughs> you, put, you put the shark in the bed or either in the, water, in the tank, you know, where the... Uh, and run some water on them. Yeah, and yeah. when you run like out the of bed, yeah, put them then, in the bathtub. Then you put them under the bed. You put them in the bed. And, you know, just wherever the room. And now the whole place is smelling like fish. You know, and, and now it's time to go to the sound check. Oh man, you know, I said, we gotta stop. <laughs> that was funny. I enjoyed it though. You know, it was, I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. But they really enjoyed fishing, man. And yeah, but they 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 did stop and go to sound check. Or oh, they, they, went to, they went to sound check, and then after sound check, they came back and then had to go. You know, go and did the show. But as soon as the show was over, about midnight, they came back and started back fishing. They said no group tonight. No group <laughs> right. just fish. We're fishing, fishing tonight, fishing, and they fished all night all until night, they till the next morning. <laughs> Until um, they fell asleep by four o'clock and and it couldn't go in nobody's room, so they, they crashed in my room where I had a 
No. <laughs> also didn't have no fish in my room. Yeah, so it smelled so the okay. next morning, the next morning, I look out the window and I see Richard Cole throwing his fish back in the, and they floating on the top. Man, boom, boom, because the one of them didn't throw them all back. This, the uh, the cleanup lady made him throw them back in there. And they had a big hole. They had a whole case of Dom Perignon in the refrigerator, and, and Richard just threw the refrigerator into in the, the bay too. <laughs> with the with the champagne. With the, with the champagne and the, and the, and the uh, thing is floating on floating down, down the river. So they say, "Hey man, where's the champagne?" He said, "There you go." <laughs> All right, man, on that note, yeah. <laughs> the Big yeah. M, the Rock Doc, yeah, have yeah. a great Sunday. Yeah, I lived through it all, man. <laughs> yes, you did. Like Joe yes, McCall, did. I did it all. Yes, you did. <laughs> Double sevens, and you're still here, and hopefully you'll be here yeah, a long good. time to come. And everybody want to die. Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. So I'm you not got that hurry. right, man. All right. All right, later. Rock Doc, Big M, out for now. Have a great Sunday. See yeah, you all. Bye-bye. Bye.